All right, let's talk about tile maps, a new feature for uh, SpriteKit devs in uh, Xcode 8. This is some pretty cool stuff, and uh, what I'm going to do is kind of skip you ahead to, to show you the cool part about it, uh, and then we'll backtrack and we'll begin from um, even actually taking a look at some of the uh, the artwork that is populating this, and then we'll build it up into Xcode. But uh, take a look at the cool stuff first. So you essentially have a, a tile map node, and you can pick out the you know swatches that you want to basically paint in here, and you can even... Uh, randomize them with with a variant so you can see that uh, you know we're just looking at this kind of center one over here but uh, you'll notice that some of them come in with a cactus on them so you can set up uh, how often the your kind of random variants occur uh, right now it's kind of weighting them all about equally uh, now that's one way of painting in I'm gonna undo a little bit uh, but you can also choose over choose this uh, set up an eight-way tile and watch what happens so I'm just gonna click down here and you can see that it puts in my center tile but then it basically makes this whole little border around it and then as I keep painting along it intelligently shapes out you know this little island thing right so you've even got these kind of oddball cases where you've Got a, let me see if I can zoom in enough where I can show it to you. Here we go. So you've got your kind of bottom edge over here, then your outer, uh, this is technically your left edge. Uh, and then you've got this this corner piece up here that's just got this little bit of rounding to connect those two. So it's, uh, it, it is pretty cool and it's almost addicting to go through here and make these little <laughs> structures like that. Uh, and then even within this, uh, you know, other than your painting tools, you've got some other options for um, filling in, basically painting in uh, with a paint bucket, like a whole bunch of swatches at once. Uh, you can set up a uh, kind of a clone stamp tool. So I could take maybe like this little shape right here and just stamp that around. So there's all sorts of fun stuff. But uh, again, we're, we've are we already gotten ahead of ourselves. So let's go backtrack. We'll take a look at some of the artwork and then uh, put that into Xcode and I'll show you how to set this up. So let's uh, make a new game, and I'm just going to set this to be iOS. I'm creating a new project, game, Sprite Kit, obviously, and we'll call this uh, Tile Map Lesson. I'll probably just put it anywhere in my Documents folder. So I'm just going to click on Next, and that was uh, Swift and Sprite Kit for the, the uh, settings, obviously. And let's bring in some assets. I'm going to give you guys some stuff that you can import in. Uh, but uh, then we'll, again, we'll we'll take a look at uh, how those were generated. Uh, what we want to do is put them into a new sprite atlas. Okay, and uh, you'll know that you got the right one if you see these uh, four little icons over here. And uh, you can delete out the one that just comes in there by default. Okay, so I'm going to uh, drop in some tiles over here. Do, 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 do. And these are all 128 by 128, but um, I'm actually going to want them to be, oh, that's their 2x size. So let me just drop them in first, and I'll, I'll fix them real quick. If I had actually had a... Um, the name extension with at 2x, they would have known to drop into the 2x slots, but it is also pretty easy to just go through here and uh, move them on over. You can see that I have gone ahead and named them uh, something that makes sense based on the um, those little eight-way tile maps we're going to set up later, and that I think will help you if you get them named up. Okay. And one thing you want to double check is that they did actually end up inside of uh, that, uh, that sprite folder. All right, so good to go. Let's uh, cl close that up. And now what we're going to do is go over here to File, New. And this is going to be File. I just got the strangest feedback from my speaker over there. I don't know if that got recorded or not. All right, uh, and actually it's already got the, uh, the what I want selected over here. If uh, you have trouble finding it, just put it in here for the filter tile, and then that's gonna be Sprite Kit Tile Set. Okay, and you can really call it whatever you want. Um, you know, CS Tiles, right, whatever. Okay, so we got our new uh, tile set over here. It's gonna be a uh, a new group, and uh, again, it's just kind of putting us, giving us one in here by default. Might as well make this our water one. So uh, select over here and uh, go over here to the uh, media library. And again, if you want to just type this in, you can find water really quickly. Throw that in there, and then you can see that you do have the option to add in a variant. I don't actually have one uh, for the water, uh, and uh, let's give this tile group a, a better name we'll just call it water and then let's make another uh, new single tile group we'll do that 
for a kind of generic, uh, just kind of single rock texture. So let's get rid of this. We'll put in here uh, the center one. There we go. And let's call this rock. All right, now this one, we could put in a variant. Uh, I have a center variant one and two. So just drop these guys in. There we go. And then click on this one and you'll see that you do have some properties over here. Um, and actually you could put in here some animation as well. But uh, what we want to do is, and you know what, I think I need to go and select. I must not have the right thing selected. Oh, there it is. The placement weight. All right, so if I were to put in here two for the placement weight, that means that uh, this tile should appear uh, twice as often as the, the variants. So if you mostly wanted uh, the, the empty one, throw in here something like five, and as you're kind of painting through, uh, you can see if you know if it's uh, coming in there as, about as often as you want. Another neat option you have too is uh, you could throw in here center, basically put in your center one again, and then again, put in here like kind of a higher weight, but then flip it around. So you can flip it vertically, horizontally, looks like you can rotate it 90 degrees. So that would just be, yet again, another way of kind of uh, varying uh, how these are gonna look. Okay, so uh, these are our single ones, not our eight-way tiles. Let's uh, create one of those. So I'm just gonna select that. Go over here to new eight-way adjacency group. All right, what a fancy name. Uh, and uh, check out the preview here. They really kind of show you um, you know, how your tile should in theory kind of look, right? So upper edge, kind of rounded like this, upper right edge over here. Uh, and now these are kind of the confusing ones. And it's a great, it's really great that they put in here these little silhouettes because I think this gives you an excellent understanding of what these should look like. So you can see that it's just kind of rounded like that. And you know what, if when you're designing things, you could do what I did, which is basically screen grab this, right? And then just bring it into your uh, design folder or design, you know, whatever, design program and kind of, you know, use that as your way for remembering uh, what are these supposed to look like? My actual tiles, um, they they don't cut off right in the middle like this. They they, they basically down, go a little bit further down to the bottom. And then I've, you know, the whole thing is basically pulled a little bit further to the, the edges, which is actually, I think, most likely what you'd want to do. Uh, so that way, if you do have a character and he's kind of standing in the middle of one of these tiles, you know, for, and a good example would be this, these corner ones. You know, you don't want him to f feel like he's falling off into the water or something like that. You know, you want to, you know have some area where he's actually standing. Uh, but anyway, that gives you an idea. And uh, let's uh, let's do this. Let's fl uh, flip over here to Flash. I'm going to show you guys the, the tile template uh, that I'm going to give you. And uh, yet, yet again, you can see that yeah, I just basically put in there that uh, screenshot and uh, kind of began you know, just designing these assets based around that. And when I was testing things, obviously, I'd go through here and uh, you know, kind of pull together my own, you know, mock-up map, right? So I'd put this over here like this, and just making sure that, you know, obvious things like these are gonna kind of gel well together. And let's take a look at, let's see, let's grab this guy out of here. Okay, so this would be a case where, let me move it up this way, where you've got your down edge over here, and your left edge over this way. So you can see what they have in mind for that, right? So you've just got this little part that's kind of connecting those up together. And you know, I guess if you absolutely didn't want to do that, you know, you didn't have to, you could just throw in your center tile. Certainly not gonna look as good. Let's see what that would look like, right? Yeah, definitely looks a bit odd. Okay, so if you are gonna make uh, some sort of map like this, uh, you know, follow the rules. And uh, in the template, uh, you can see that if I kind of scrub through the timeline here, the actual stage for this is set up to be 128 by 128. And as you scrub through, I've gone ahead and just written above here what each of these should be named. Uh, what I did though is um, I found, I thought it was a little bit easier to just go to export movie. And what this is gonna do is just export out all the frames up top here that are inside, obviously this little square. And then I just went through and I renamed them um, you know, manually, uh, which 
you'd kind of have to do anyway if you went through any export each frame at a time. All right, so uh, that's how I got the frames that uh, we're going to use inside of here. And then uh, each one of these, obviously, we're just going to just you know kind of drag into there. Again, you can put in here your uh, variant uh, definition. So instead of watching me kind of drag all these in here, um, I'm going to pause the video and uh, come back when it's all done. All right, so I've got those in there and I did uh, add in a center variant just for the center one because that's the only one I've got a variant for. I changed this to uh, Rock 8-Way, just the name of it. Uh, and now we're ready to go ahead and uh, paint these guys into our scene uh, file. So uh, go over here to your object uh, library and you can type in tile and you'll quickly find your tile map. Let's go ahead and set this uh, right at zero and zero. And if you want to name it, Let's call it uh, water tile map. And this one will just dedicate to our wild, uh, water. So uh, one thing to note though is that the tile size is set to uh, 64 by 64, which is exactly half of our 128 by 128 uh, source images for the tiles. Uh, and uh, let's double click in, because remember those are all at uh, uh, two X sizes. So easiest way to get all of our water in here is watch this. We're just going to grab the paint bucket. I do have this one selected over here. Boom. Ready to go, right? Uh, if you did want to erase some of these, you can get erase them. But uh, we can probably just get away with, um, you know, a big old water pattern. Uh, in which case, let's uh, dive back over here to our main scene and then put in here another node, which will just be dedicated to our rocks. And again, I'll just put center that right in there at zero, zero. So uh, this one we'll call it uh, rock node. And uh, or I should really call it rock tile map. Uh, whatever, the name doesn't matter. And Xcode crashed on me. Well, hey, still beta. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, just fill these guys in. Here we go. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Pretty fun, huh? Now... If you wanted, let's see, let's get this in here. Let me make a nice little kind of solid area. I'll zoom in a little bit. And we could switch out to, we can take um, auto map off. Okay. And then that would let us um, kind of go in here and pick out exact tiles that we'd want to use. So if you maybe wanted to kind of chip away a little bit, let's uh, grab the eraser. So I'll get rid of this one. And then around that, uh, what you might want to do is grab, so your left edge over here, your right edge, and so on. So kind of making a little island within here. We'd want our bottom, our down edge. There it is. Oops. Oh, I probably could use that one too. There we go. And where's our other corner guy? There we go. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. Well, you know, I might as well just finish it off, right? And then finally, we're looking for our up edge. There it is. Okay, so it looks a little weird that they're both kind of mirror images of each other, but uh, that is, uh, that's how that could work, and uh, yeah, pretty neat. Right, all right, so um, we've already taken a look at the, the flood fill. That's how we got the, uh, the water in there. That's the eraser. Uh, select brush size. That's a pretty cool one. You can actually bump up the brush size, so, um, you know, you'd, obviously you'd be making bigger chunks of... Um, of the uh, the tiles and then as for the uh, little stamper all right let's see if we can get this working so uh, click this I'm gonna select this area right here and oh, well, there we go let's see oh looks like it <laughs> stamped out the entire thing uh, that's not what we want Oh, we'll randomize. We'll get to that one in a second. Uh, let's try this again. This one I did have a little bit of trouble with earlier. Let's see. Maybe, maybe I have to go back to enable auto mapping. Let's see. Let's just grab that. So basically, oh, okay. All right. So it did actually give me that. So you can see that um, it, it sliced out that little square there. And, uh, well, 
not exactly work it, but hey, maybe we'll get it patched up in beta. So then another option you have is uh, to randomize, and let's see if we can uh, kind of back out of this. Let's see if I can just erase everything. Uh, maybe enable auto mapping has to be off for that. Let's try. Okay, so we've got all those. Uh, This is the one tool I didn't mess around with too much. Well, even after uh, <laughs> shutting it down, restarting it, I could not figure out how to get that randomized working. So who knows? But hey, this is uh, you know, still beta stuff, but uh, this definitely shows you the uh, nice little shape of things to come when it comes to, uh, I did try to add in another tile in there as well. But um, hey, you know what? As long as we got these cool adjacency ones working, I'll uh, I'll be happy with that. And obviously, we could uh, extend these to be uh, you know used not just for uh, top-down view, but uh, you know make entire uh, you know two D platformers uh, using this method. Uh, so what we'll talk about in a future video is how to work with them uh, with your code and uh, do obviously more than just uh, paint with them.